YouTube subscribers, viewers, and other people, cool million one here. And today we're playing some Counter Strike, and uh, of course the title. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but you know, for the Counter Strike part, it's a game that I actually like recently started appreciating slash enjoying. What I mean by that is, I actually started to take it like serious and play it a lot more with my friends and stuff. And if you want to see more of this, just put it in the comments or you like the video, whatever. But uh, now getting on to the the topic, which I don't know if you guys have been wanting to know this from me for a while, or if you've been wanting to see a video on this, but <clears throat> this is a topic that most people, sorry, I had something in my throat, this is a topic that most people either sway to the left or sway to the right. Me, I kind of stay in the middle, I want to see where everything goes. So, uh, before we get to the pros, cons, in my opinion, we're just going to list out some games. So, there's Heroes and Generals. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Heroes and Generals is a World War II free-to-play game. Uh, including all elements of combat, you know, ground, air, infantry, everything like that. Um, so, Heroes and Generals, in my opinion, I think this does the best representation of free-to-play with in-game transactions, mainly because it's either time or money. So, if you have the time to play the game and get that sense of achievement, great. But say you work, you have school, college, <coughs> whatever the case might be, sorry again. Um then yeah, I mean I totally understand if you buy because you don't have the time to play the game to achieve those goals and uh, levels, things like that. So that's a good representation and as we get like lower in the list you'll see like you know the change. Next is Planet Side 2. Um, I don't think this does a good representation mainly because uh, I don't know it seems like you could funnel hundreds of dollars into this game, tens of hundreds of dollars into this game and you won't, you'll still feel kind of not having the advantage, I don't know how to word it, you'll still feel like you're below people. And you're probably thinking I'm just saying this, but I have played the game before. I funneled, I think, only 20 bucks into the game and I still felt lower than everyone. I think you have to like funnel like 500 bucks into the game to actually feel like high up there. But then again, this is opinion. I'm trying to keep opinions out of this until the very end when I'm going to say my belief. But... Next on the list, H1Z1. Um, H1Z1, I guess, does an okay representation of this, mainly because you could call in a crate and anyone could just swarm the crate and take it from you. Uh, if, for those of you that don't know, H1Z1 is a free-to-play zombie game. And, uh, or not zombie game, survival, horror, zombie. It's not really a horror, but, you know, just a zombie game where you could uh, kill other players, kill zombies, things like that, build a base. And, um... The things you can pay for in this game is like cod cosmetics, sorry, <laughs> cosmetics, what the hell is that? Um, and crates. So crates you just call and they have like weapons in them in, or weapons and stuff in them. But then again, they could be found and taken from another player. Um, and then the game that does the worst representation of it, I think is War Z, or as most of you may know it, Infestation Survivor Stories, or <laughs> Stories, or ISS. And, um, main reason I think this is because, first of all, you have to pay for the game. And then second of all, at least me, I'll find myself in situations where I either say, do I want to get, or where I think to myself, do I want to go out for three hours and go looting and possibly get killed by a player? Or do I want to buy all the things I need to survive and then go hunting for players that are doing just that, you know, just spending three hours trying to get things just to survive and then get killed by someone that bought everything. So, you can't buy guns, but the trick is you can buy ammo, you can buy food, you can buy water, and all that, all the necessities for survival. So, um, on to the in-game transaction pros and cons. Um, mind you, this is all, I did research, there's websites that you could go on, you could just type in free-to-play statistics, um, one-time purchase game statistics, things like that. So these are all uh, pros and cons, these are all based on research that I've done. So pros for in-game transactions, the company gets money for, <coughs> for uh, you know, more updates, things like that. Um, and then we have the buy entertainment, so you could buy your entertainment, like if you don't have the time or money. And then the third point is like pretty much just that, money versus time. If you don't have the time to play the game, maybe you have the money. Uh, if you don't have the money to play the game, maybe you have the time. So it all it's all just based on money versus time and the company rolling out updates. So now for the cons, the advantages and unfairness. So 
you could be a player that hasn't dished any money in it, and you're still lead, like getting higher up there, but then you have other people that have advantages over you, and you kind of get this sense of unfairness. Um, that I haven't felt in Heroes in Generals, because it's one of those games where... I don't know how to explain it. It's just, you can buy things, but I don't feel like someone has an advantage over me. I don't know, it's just a fun game to me. Um, so we're going to go on to the one-time purchase pros and cons. So here we go for the pros. So, and, you know, remember this is all based on research. I'm not just pulling things out of my ass and saying it. So pros, you have a constant player base uh, based on research. One-time purchase games have a constant player base, so uh, maybe they're not feeling like that people have an advantage over them, so they stick around longer, who knows. Um, and it feels equal. So what I mean by that is everyone's equal. Uh, in Daisy's kind of, for those of you that don't know, Daisy is another free to, or not free to play. <laughs> Would have made a mistake there. Daisy is a survival zombie game where you could kill other players or kill zombies, whichever. And uh, yeah, so you have to loot around and get your gear. So, that game is equal, because, you know, you loot around, no one can buy things, you could get killed, someone could take your gear, you know, whatever, you move on. And then, uh, coming to my third point, there's little to no abandonment, which kind of ties, in, ties into the first point, which is constant player base. Mainly because some people run into the issue, oh, I don't have any more money to spend on this game. So they'll just abandon it until they do have money, based on research. And then, the only con for the one-time purchase games that I've come across is the company doesn't get constant money for updates but in DayZ's kind of perspective I'm just using it as an example I'm not being biased towards it or anything um, in DayZ's example they are selling like millions of copies and they're uh, they're putting out frequent updates so that's a good thing but for most games that do this they can't roll out like frequent updates just due to money issues uh, based on research which I really haven't seen, but I guess it's research. Damn. Research is research. So now that we've gone through like points, things like that, um, let me tell you my belief. So my belief in a free-to-play game is that if you really enjoy the game, I would only pay about you know 40, 50, 60 bucks. Main reason for that is that uh, there's so when you go to GameStop. And there's a relatively new game out. You pay 40 bucks, right? So, you know, why should I pay more than how much a game is worth for a free-to-play game? Main reason I say that is because if I don't get the same amount of entertainment out of a free-to-play game that I would out of a new game that has just come out, uh, then you know there probably isn't point to there probably isn't a point to playing it. But um, some games I went over that. So, for example, example that example Counter Strike. I've paid maybe more than a game's worth in keys because um, I really haven't played it that much but just combined in the whole time that I've had it I have paid probably 65 70 bucks in keys and uh, some of them are still unused I still had them just to open cases with but uh, yeah probably don't have them anymore or something but just it's just a weird concept if you really like the game go ahead buy it uh, if you don't then if you feel like you're at a disadvantage, then don't do it at all. It's kind of a weird belief that I have. If you like it, of course, dish some money. If you don't like it, then don't try to dish money and see if you will like it. There's there's the concept. If you like it, dish money. If you don't like it, don't dish money just to think that you will like it if you have the advantage. So, I hope you liked this video. Please put in the comments if you want to see more Counter-Strike Global Offensive gameplay. Or if you want to see uh, some more commentaries. And also put in the comments whether you like free to play or one game or one time transactions. My I you know, I love one time transaction games like where you just pay once and you're good. But when it comes to free to play, um I'm kinda mixed on it. Just put what you think about free to play games. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.